Hello and welcome back to our Action RPG series. In the previous episode, we added our cooldowns to our abilities, but they're just there in data form. We haven't got anything visual to show for the cooldown. So what we're going to do in this episode is work on the UI action slots on our hotbar so that you can show a cooldown on it. So let's jump in and get started and take a look at how this works. So the last time we were in the Action RPG uh, project we worked on the cooldown and spawning of our abilities and getting them working as intended in this episode we're going to now make the ui respond and show our cooldown in action so for this i'm going to bring in some assets that i've uh, picked up from the marketplace i recommend you check it out it's by rexard uh, he does a lot of cool icons and hand-drawn icons i mean i love this stuff um so i'm going to use a couple of these uh, for this project but definitely check out his work excellent stuff i love it I think I've got a lot of his work already bought. So I'm going to bring in a couple of those examples in here. So I'm going to go into my abilities thumbnails. And we're going to add a thumbnail to this. Um, beyond just the default one I just used. And I'll bring in this one. So still working on our slash. I'm going to get rid of the slash thing there. Uh, force delete. I'm going to use this one instead. The reason I want to use this one is because I'm going to showcase that bar on it a bit more easier. So I'm going to rename this one to slash icon T and then go to my ability slash and assign it there. There we go. Okay, so now our UI. Our UI needs to showcase the abilities that we assigned in our spellbook. So if I go to our UI folder, we've got the player HUD here. And we've got these individual action slots. And these action slots are other widgets that we've assigned here. So these need to be assigned and look at a particular ability in our ability folder. So this one, the left click is one we're looking at first of all. So I'm going to go to edit the action slot for this. And let's do some code on here to indicate what it should be looking for. So let's go to the graph. And on the construct, we're going to get the player character. And then cast to our top down character. And we'll promote to a variable. We might as well for here. And then from there, I want to get the ability spellbook from that. So I'm going to get this spellbook that we made last time. And we get the abilities that we've assigned to it. Get assigned abilities. And in this case, we want to get a specific index. So what we're going to do is do get a copy. And this index here, we're going to make a variable. And that will be ability index. And that will be editable. So tick on editable like that. So what that means is I can now go on the player HUD and I can assign which one of these uh, is being used for that. I click on here, for example. And I might have to compile it. There you go. Ability index, I can set each one of these up. So this first one will be set to one, two, three, four, zero, and five. Okay. So compile, save that. So back on here, we're getting the ability. Yep. And we're going to do class defaults. And we are going to get the thumbnail and apply it to our image of the icon. Okay, so take the image icon, get set brush from texture. And the texture is our thumbnail. Okay, so if I were to play the game, we should. Oh, I've picked the wrong one. <laughs> it should be the one we want to do there. Hang on, let me just put the wrong one. Uh... Uh, action slot, not image icon. I named him wrong. Yeah, I named him wrong. Uh, image icon. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Border. Uh, just uh, tick this variable, and we'll do spell icon. In fact, um, actually, what I'll do rather than use the border is we'll use an image. Actual image.
Okay, and this will be img spell. If I go back to my graph, I want to change that to spell icon. There we go. Uh, on the design view, just make sure that that's spread out across the whole thing like that. And I can actually set the border here to nothing if I want to help make life a little bit nicer. I can go to brush color. I'll tell you what, I won't do nothing. I'll just do, do a faded out one, 0 0.1. So, we get there. Well, it hasn't faded out, but oh, that's because the image is blank on it. Never mind. But there you go. We've got the icon on there. Okay. So, um, we now need to make the cooldown appear on this icon. So, when I click on it, I'll see a little progress bar on it, maybe uh, indicating how long's left before it can cast again. Now, obviously, this one's quite a fast one. So, it will regenerate quite quickly. But hopefully, you can see that in action. Um, so, some errors here. What we've got here access none to read class from property. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, it's because we are looking for action slots that we don't have. So if I go into my action slot, this get is getting an ability that doesn't exist yet. We haven't assigned it. So what we can do is just do an is valid index. And oh, it will, actually not valid. It will be valid because it's empty. We'll just take this and do is valid class. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Okay, hopefully that'll clear that error from happening. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so the action slot and its progress bar. So it needs a progress bar on top of it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, on this border, going to put inside of it an overlay. So I'm going to right click on my image spell icon, wrap with an overlay panel. This will push it to the side a little bit. We're just going to go and change that to fill up. There we go. And I'm going to put a progress bar in here too. So search progress bar and chuck that into the overlay. Make it stretch across the whole thing. There we go. And there is our progress bar. So we just need to change its style and how we want it to look. So I'm going to make it fill downwards. Um, so I'm going to go to the percent here, just scale it up a little bit so I can see what it's doing. So bar fill type, I'm going to change from top to bottom. No, uh, not top to bottom. On the bottom to top, there we go. So it goes down like that. Uh, as for the background, I still want to see the icon behind it, so I know which uh, ability is recharging or cooling down. So we go down the background image, and change draw as none. So I see that behind there. And as for the fill image, I'm going to change the way this looks as well. So I don't want it to be like a solid blue box or solid color. I'm going to make it a bit see through. So I'm going to go to the tint here and change the alpha down to like 0.4. Okay, and then I can change the color to whatever I like. Uh, let's do a red. So again, always check, make sure things, how things look. Yeah, that looks okay. We've got a little red mark you can see on our icon there. So stop that. Okay, so we need to now make that obviously read and look at a particular ability on our character so previously the way this worked we set up was the player character when they spawn the ability in they store the ability in a figure like this like a reference here and so we just need to get a, re a, 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 a reference from uh, of this to that ui to that slot now our action slot at the moment is generic they're not going to be specific to a particular one so i can't just go get ability zero and do that because we'll be using this for other spells as well so how can we do this well there's a clever little thing you can do we can get a ability from the array on the player character based upon this ability index all i need to do is go back to my character and ability zero i'm going to change this to a array over here uh, change variable type this will break a few things, but that's fine. What we're going to do on this is we're going to drag out a, um, ability zero. Let's actually rename this one. Uh, we'll call it spawned abilities. And we're going to do set array element. And you're going to set array element zero index item there. Then at the start, we need to check if it's a valid 
in, uh, valid index is valid. Uh, not valid index, sorry. We need to know if uh, get a copy zero is valid. Like that. Right now. And as I mentioned in the last video, um, every time you change something about your thing, you just want to make sure um, that you can make sure it works as it was intended to originally, and then test your new functionality. Uh, so we've got a warning here, can't pass default value none for spawned abilities. Um, that's fine. We can just go into here and just add the six abilities there. And that clears up. Okay, so now if I go back to my ability icon, action slot, I can now get the spawned in ability and assign it to my um, progress bar. So on my tick event, I'm going to go to my top down character, get, and we're going to go get abilities spawned. And in here, we're going to do get copy of the index, which we've got aside over here, ability index. Plug that in. And when we get in that, we first of all want to check if it's valid. So is valid. And if it is valid, we want to make the progress bar first of all visible. So set visibility to visible. Like that. In fact, I'll make it non-hit testable. The difference between visible and non-hit testable is that visible will block any inputs you have on it, whereas non-hit testable will allow input to go through. So we can do like other checks and things like that later if we need to. So if you don't need it to be clicked on, we can just use non-hit testable. Uh, so that progress bar will be visible now, and we now need to change its things. Now this is on a tick event. So what we need to do is we need to take this get value, and we are going to drag that from there. In fact, what I'll do is I'll promote. No, I won't promote it to available. I'll just do it from here. Um, and get, uh, what's it called? Remaining? No. Uh, life. Yeah, get, get life spam. This returns how much life they have left. So, in other words, our cooldown. And we're going to take the progress bar and set percent. Based upon this lifespan. Now, at the moment, we, our lifespan is one, so we could plug it in, but other actors' abilities won't be just one. There'll be more. And a percentage for the progress bar goes between zero and one. So what we need to do is normalize it so it goes down and fits between a zero to one range. And the way we do that is we have to get the cooldown of the ability. So if I drag out from this ability pin here and search for cooldown, I can now normalize the lifespan. So I go normalize to range and put the cooldown into the range max. That will now give me my percentage. Compile and save. So let's take a look at this in action and see if that works. So there you go. You can see a progress bar going down, indicating that the cooldown has happened for that ability. And if I were to spam the button, nothing would happen. Yeah, I can't make it go any faster because the ability still exists in the world. Okay. All good. Next thing we we'll do is when this is false and it has no spawned ability, we're going to change the progress bar's visibility to hidden. So I'm going to do that. And put that to is not valid. I don't need another reference. I can just use the same pin here. And I'll change the visibility here to hidden. So what should happen is all of them should be hiding now, except when this is attacking. And there you go. We've now got our action bar working with a single ability, our slash. Uh, but let's think about what we can do next and think about the next ability. So in the next episode, we're going to go through and create another ability, a projectile-based ability, and talk for the little bits that are a bit different for a projectile and improve our ability system even further. You can watch the next episode right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. 
Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thank you much for watching, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.